talking about something he displays prominently in his home. Joseph seemingly boasting about having an axe and then immediately asking if Aaron thought that Joseph was going to murder him with said axe on his property demonstrates a very concerning frame of mind. Aaron should be starting to realize that coming out to the alone with Joseph was a very bad idea, as was this entire job. Even the most oblivious and gullible human beings would have noticed the absurd amount of red flags by now. If Aaron doesn't have some sort of weapon on him already, he needs to find a rock or a sharp stick in case this field trip ends at a free dug hole. Panicking or doing anything to provoke Joseph, who's clearly mentally disturbed, would be a bad idea. Aaron needs to cooperate long enough to get out GG. of and to prepare for a fight. <laughs> Running won't be an option. Aaron's far too out of shape for the distance they've covered, and he hasn't been keeping track of the path that they took coming in. After several forks in the trail, the only thing that they've found is a sewer line, and Aaron begins to wonder if they've gotten lost. Joseph takes off running like before, only this time he calls Aaron to join him at a nearby overlook. Looking over the edge, the natural morphology of the rock forms a crude heart shape near some rushing water below. The two points de Leon splash around a bit in the shallows before anointing each other. After they hug it out, Joseph scratches J plus A in a heart on a nearby folder, and then suggests that they head to a local restaurant for some of the world's best pancakes. We know from their introduction that Joseph's wife's name is Angela, but given everything we've seen so far, it's a safe bet that J plus A he drew in the rock stands for Joseph and Aaron. This should be a clear indication to Aaron that Joseph intends to make their relationship a permanent one. Aaron needs to be calling or messaging people he can trust to let them know his whereabouts and the details of his situation. Conflict with Joseph is all but inevitable at this point, so it would be a good idea to have some backup on the way. He should also make sure to keep his keys on him at all times in case the opportunity presents itself to get the hell out of Dodge. Upon sitting down at Billy Bear's, Joseph cracks open the menu, wondering out loud what might be any good. Aaron's confused by this, as Joseph's family has supposedly been coming to this place for years. Joseph quickly shrugs off the suspicion Mid-mouthful, Joseph asks Aaron if he's done anything he's really ashamed of. We learn that Aaron used to wet his pants so frequently that his parents invested in some kind of moisture-based alarm system that sounded every time he had an accident. One day on the playground, nature came calling, and young Aaron found himself soaked in urine while the alarm blew the attention of everyone around him. Joseph then asks Aaron if he can have a turn. He pulls out his phone and reveals photos he secretly took of Aaron upon arriving at the vacation home. He blames his shitty behavior on his little social anxiety, claiming he just wanted to get to know Aaron before Aaron got to know him. As he apologizes for being a creep and says he hopes that they can move past it. Although clearly bothered by this revelation, Aaron reluctantly forgives him. Aaron's decision to go have pancakes with Joseph after all these witnessed is remarkably naive. It's actually quite reasonable for Joseph to check the menu despite claiming he's been to this restaurant for years. It's a common force of habit and menus do change. The fact that Aaron finds this suspicious after ignoring countless red flags is alarmingly stupid. Speaking of Joseph's family, why is Aaron still not asking about them and their whereabouts? A public restaurant is the perfect place to start grilling Joseph with complex questions that would be difficult to lie about on the spot. This would also be a great time to try to get his full name so Aaron can Google it right there. The revelation that Joseph was secretly photographing Aaron when he first arrived is yet another red flag on top of a mountain of red flags at this point. I could understand Joseph peeking out of his window to see who was at the door, but the fact that he took pictures from multiple angles, some eerily close to where Aaron was standing, and then spent half an hour looking them over before jump scaring Aaron in his car is not only strange, but also inconsistent. Joseph said he only spied on Aaron because he was scared, except Joseph has presented himself as anything but shy or scared from the very beginning. Why is he even telling Aaron all this anyways? Aaron's shrugging this off and saying he's moved past it, thereby maintaining an unprovoking posture until he can find an opportunity to leave is acceptable. Joseph and Aaron return to the house and then scaling the long staircase leading up to the front door. As they near the top, Aaron tells Joseph he's going to head back home. Joseph makes his disappointment glaringly obvious. He was hoping Aaron would stay for a whiskey so the two of them could commemorate their day. He breaks out the oldest trick in the book begging Aaron to stick around for just one drink. Aaron caves to the guilt trip and agrees to hang around for just a bit longer. Under no circumstance would re-entering Joseph's home at night be reasonable for Aaron. This man is clearly a psychopath and has spent the entire day forcing a friendship rather than filming his video diary for his son. He needs to think of a rock-solid excuse to avoid being screwed over by his 